Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. All right, well, happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Jordan and Kristen Pray For You. We pray you're going to have a great week. I want to talk to you real quick about how God puts his brightest lights in the darkest places. And this is a a sermon that's very close to me and close to, to Kristen, because I'll be honest with you, we don't live in the most Christian area in the world, and it can be kind of frustrating sometimes uh, and you know, it's not uncommon for us to say things like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we lived, you know, in somewhere, you know, like South Carolina or somewhere down south or something or somewhere in the Bible Belt where, you know, there are more churches and you can have more Christian friends and just, you know, the culture is more accepting of the way you are and things like that. But, you know, you can you can say things like that or you can realize, yeah, maybe there aren't a lot of great churches around here, but maybe that's the, that's the point. Maybe God wants you to start that church. Yeah, maybe you don't have a lot of Christian friends around here. Maybe that's a point. Maybe your job is to evangelize to the people you know and turn them into Christian friends. Or maybe you have this frustration like I had, which is, well, how am I ever going to find a Christian wife? Well, maybe this is an, a time to exercise faith that, you know, God makes rivers in the desert and he made He made one for me. He makes a way where there is no way. This is something we see in the Bible time and again. Uh, you, you know, people didn't always want to go where God wanted them to go. We know that Moses had no interest in going back to Egypt uh, to talk to Pharaoh. Okay. We also know, for example, and, and this is probably the more, one of the more famous stories about Jonah who didn't want to go to Nineveh. It's an interesting story because, you know, we think about that story as being about Jonah in a whale, right? And, and you know the story. God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to go. He took a boat in the exact opposite direction, okay? So God causes this storm to come. Jonah knows it's about him. He throws himself overboard, basically, so that the rest of the boat can be saved. And a giant fish comes, swallows Jonah up, and three days later spits him out on the beach because Jonah's repented, which is something you'd be smart to do if you found yourself in the belly of a giant fish. And then, you know, uh, he goes on his way. That's actually not the more important part of the story, at least not uh, not as pertains to this sermon anyway. What actually happens after that is he goes to Nineveh. He basically says, look, you guys are going to be destroyed within 40 days if you don't repent. And they all repent. So it has a happy ending, right? Well, not quite, because Jonah then gets upset about that. Now you think, wait a minute, this guy's an evangelist. He shouldn't be getting upset. But he says, see, God, I knew. This is why I didn't want to go here, because I knew you would forgive these people. And these are wicked people, and they deserve to be punished. And the way the story ends is Jonah basically throws a little temper tantrum, goes out into the desert where he's sitting there feeling sorry for himself, and God causes a, a some kind of plant to grow over his head to provide him shade. And he's very grateful about that. But then God destroys the plant and it doesn't provide him shade anymore. And now he's all burning up and now he's upset. And God says to him, hang on a second. You really liked that plant, didn't you? And and Jonah says, yes. And I'm very upset, of course, that, you know, it's been destroyed. And God says, well, look, there are tens of thousands of people in Nineveh. Okay. You think I wanted them destroyed? All right. You cared about this one plant that you had nothing to do with creating, and it was just here and it was gone. Look at all these thousands and tens of thousands of other people over here who I created. So how much more do I care about them? See, we lose sight of that sometimes, that, you know, God truly doesn't want people to come to destruction, right? We think of we think of God sometimes, as I've said this before, as some kind of angry police officer who just wants to, you know, take revenge on his enemies. But no, God wants people to come to him. He doesn't rejoice when people are, are sent to hell. He rejoices when they when they become saved. And so we should also, okay? And so getting back to sort of the main point here, we don't always want to be in the dark areas, right? We want to be in the nice Bible Belt sort of areas where everyone else is a Christian and, and there's all, you know, churches on every street corner and things like that. Guess what? God doesn't need his greatest lights there, okay? that Those places are already shining bright. God needs his greatest lights in the darkest places. It comes up a bunch of times in the New Testament. And just very briefly, in John, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. 
in Matthew, he says, we are the lights of the world. And what's, you might think that's a contradiction. Well, what's the difference? Well, if the whole verse in John, John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, darkness, but have the light of life. So, yes, you are a light, but you're a light insofar as you're allowing Jesus to shine through you. Okay? This is expanded on in Matthew 5, where he says, you are now the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. See your works. It doesn't say let them see God's works. Let them see your good works, but obviously it's God working through you, and therefore not glorify you, but glorify your Father in heaven. Okay? So here's the point, guys. Listen, as I said, Nobody likes to be in a non-Christian environment. And the reason I'm doing this sermon is because Chris and I have so many followers from really, let's be honest, very dark places in the world, places where, where Christians are persecuted. You know, Kristen and I, we get like threats on our, not that I care, but we get threats on our page sometimes where people hold like a bloody knife up to their throat or something like that to like, you know, try to scare us and we just ignore it, but whatever. But the point is that, you know, we have lots of people in areas where the minor- where the Christian culture is not just the minority culture, it's the enemy culture, okay? And no one likes being there. But guys, that's where God needs his brightest lights, okay? And he needs his brightest lights to shine. Now, we know that it's dangerous and Kristen and I absolutely pray for you. We pray for your safety. We pray you put on the full armor of God so that those lights rather than being extinguished, actually just catch on and create more and more lights. But see, that's the point, okay? We don't always get to go where we want to go, but God doesn't put us there just as a punishment, okay? He puts us there to be part of his solution, and the solution is for us to be lights in the world, to follow Christ so that we're not walking in darkness, and let Christ's light shine through us so that other people are not shining or are not living in darkness as well. All right? That's my message for you tonight. I love that. I love that. It's so important to remember to let our light shine, isn't it? And I think you look at that story of Jonah and so so many other examples in the Bible, and it's very easy to point the finger Mm -hmm. and say, oh, Jonah, I can't believe Jonah would – who would act like that? Right, right. But if we really are introspective, we'll see that there might – there are, I'm sure, at least one area of your life and my life that we're doing the same thing. Wow. And we don't even realize it. Good one. Uh, I was just in the post office the other day, and I realized just for a brief second, this person ahead of me in line was taking a long, long time. And I was starting to think, oh, I'm feeling so impatient. Why can't this person just, you know, be done already? And I thought, pray for that person. You have a moment right now. You don't know what that person's going through. And to recalculate, and when that person came through the door, smile at that person. And, you know, what does that cost, right? What does a smile cost? But there's so many examples of being a light is not just a general application. It's every day. And people who are not Christians don't even know what they're seeing. They they know they're seeing something. Mm -hmm. But we just need to shine so bright in every opportunity that we have. Yeah, I mean, we talk about... Ministry, and we and we talk about um, even you know preaching to some extent. You know the best sermons are just the way that you live your life. Yes. That's what people really yes. look at. Yes. And as far as you know, what you were saying about the per- person in the post office, I'm reminded of the time that you were performing. Uh, I'm not going to mention the name in case people know these people. But you're performing at a racetrack, and you were singing the national anthem, and someone was very nasty to you. The person in charge, they were kind of very nasty. And afterwards, you know, you sang, and they were really nice to you. And you know, you found out later that the woman's husband, I think, had just died, yes. wasn't yes. it? And it just goes to show that, first of all, A, you never know what people are going through, but B, that you can just be a blessing to other people um, and that, you know, people really are, are in a lot of pain and they're hurting and they're looking for a light. And, you know, I think we get intimidated so many times and some sometimes for good reason where we think, well, you know, the nail that stands up gets hammered down. People don't want me to speak out or people don't want um, – they don't want – you know, the Bible shoved in their face. And I suppose nobody wants to shove in their face, but you can still be a really good example to other people. You can care about them. You can be the friend that they need. You can be there when no one else is there. And if you're that and they know 
that you're a Christian, then they know where that's coming from. And that's a great example of being a light. Absolutely. That's a great Speaking point. of being a light, I got this light behind my head that's causing a problem. So let me move this thing. <laughs> yes. It's a great illustration of a light. Of a light. There it was. <laughs> Shining. All right, sweetie. Can you lead us, lead us in prayer, please? Yes. Lord, thank you that you've called us to be a light in this dark world. If we look at the na- in the natural, if we look at the world as it is, if we did not have you, God, it's hopeless. There's no future. There's, there's nothing. It's, it's just a world that is totally void of anything that resembles truth, anything that resembles love and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control and joy and peace and hope. And so, God, you are those things, and you live inside us, and you've given us your light to shine. Lord, help us to do that. Help us not to hide the talent that you've given us. Help us not to hide the personality you've given us or the, or the giftings that you've given us, Lord, or the voice that you've given us. Some of us are really, really outgoing by nature. Some of us you've called to, to maybe just because those who don't even aren't as outgoing, there's still, it's still an, an admonition for all of us to speak out in, in our own way because the people that each person can reach in their sphere of influence matter. Each person has, has a sphere of influence in, in their light, in their own special way that you've created them, Lord. You've created us down to our spiritual DNA. And so you know us better than we know ourselves, God. And if we allow you to work through our, our kind of quirkiness of our personalities and the things that you've created in us, God, if, if we say no to the flesh and say yes to the spirit and allow you to work through us, then other people can see you and, and can be drawn to you. So I just, I feel like that's a word for someone tonight. You might be saying, well, I'm not very outgoing, so I don't know that I can speak out or I don't know that I want to change my personality. Let me just tell you, I feel like God is telling you, it's not that you have to change your personality, but you certainly don't have to be crushed in, in your personality. And in your own special way that God has created you in, in your spiritual DNA, you were meant to speak out even if it's softly to speak out, because you're going to touch lives. You're going to touch lives and be able to resonate with people that someone such as myself, who is more on the outgoing spectrum, way on that side, may not be able to communicate. And so you have a special, every single person has a special, unique anointing. So I just want to speak that over somebody tonight. You have a unique anointing in your giftings and your talent. For someone tonight who feels like, I don't know that I have any gifting or I don't know. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. What can, what can I do? Or I'm just a student or I'm just this. I'm just, I'm just. God wants to take you and show you how bright your light really is as you allow him to move through you into your entire community. If all of us were that light that He has called us to be for our communities, this whole entire globe will be completely on fire for him. We will see the next revival and this revival will go way over and above any revival that we've seen of of previous centuries. And Lord, I pray that we have seen many, many great revivals. And I, I would say we, we are asking you to renew that in our day, Lord. I should say we've heard about many revivals and I know there's, there've been some, but how many have been in our generation in this time period? And I'm asking you, Lord, to accelerate that and that it would be even greater than the previous generations that we would build upon what they, what they, uh, laid a foundation for God. So let us be that light for the whole world to see your love and and let us bring so many to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great job, baby. Great job. Thank you. All right, guys. We got um, about 12 prayer requests. We're going to get to them. Uh, Tessie says her fiancé is cheating and the other woman is abusive to her. Okay. So let's start with this, Tessie. I, I'm not here to give too much marriage advice. And Kristen and I didn't really talk about this ahead of time. Kristen, if you disagree with me, you can just jump right in here. Someone who is... Both your fiance and is cheating 
should not be your fiance. Mm -hmm. Let's just start with that. Yes. Because that's not going to improve with no. marriage. No. So what you should be telling me is that your ex fiance was cheating on you. And I'm very sorry that's happening. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think sometimes people have unrealistic expectations. Yeah. I believe in a miracle working God, but I also believe in a God that gives you wisdom. Yes. Yeah, okay. You. And, and this is kind of like one of the more obvious signs, for lack of a better word. And so, listen, I'm going to pray for this person. Father God, I pray in Jesus' name this guy gets his act together and he grows up and he realizes that he's on the road to perdition. And this other woman, in Jesus' name, we pray for her. We pray she's not abusive We and we prevent Tessie from being – we you know, come against anything that would harm Tessie, including this woman's abuse. But Father God, in Jesus' name, we I also thank you that you showed Tessie what kind of person this guy is. Yeah. before she got married to him because we know that this is not something that you can bring into a marriage it's it's not something that improves with time god i pray for all of their souls god if all of these people get if tessie and her fiance happen to get born again and you still want them to to be together then make that a really obvious sign but failing that uh father god please remove tessie give tessie the courage and I'm sorry if this isn't what she wants to hear, but this I just have to say this. That's right. Just, Father God, give this person the courage, please, to leave what is clearly already a really abusive relationship before it's too late. In Jesus' name, amen. That's right. Did you want to add anything to that? Because I, I don't – like, I know we didn't – that wasn't planned. No, but that that's so good. That I mean, is I don't want to so... – I'm not in the business of telling people to break up marriages, but this no, just seems kind of obvious. But listen, we're – you know, it's, you – if we, it's hard to get in the middle of something if we're talking about a marriage that is already existing. Right. You know that that's one thing to say. Okay, God, what is your will? And and of course, there are certain things, physical abuse, and um, you know, and and asking God for signs and and things like that. But when we're talking about a fiance, when the marriage hasn't even started, like you say, I mean, that's a pretty obvious thing. If someone's cheating, yeah, I, I just feel like this is God yeah. pulling her from a burning building. Yeah, I mean, really. I agree with you. Absolutely. All right. We got a couple of financial prayers here. Go okay. Ahead. So Ashan says, I uh, hope you're doing good. Uh, it's been a long time. Right after my marriage, I'm jobless. Moreover, facing tough finance issues. Pray that I get a good opportunity. And Tanamola says financial blessings. Lord, we pray for Ashan and Tanamola. Lord, I pray that both of these people would just feel your love and your arms and your guidance and your wisdom, God, you I, may you provide for them, not just financially for them and their families, but in every single way. God, may you open up the right opportunities so that a job to them is not just existing, it's not just making money, but give them passions, give them open doors, Lord, and let them thrive in those jobs as the lights that they are, God. And give you honor, glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great job. Thank you. Kennedy says, blessings, friends, and brothers in Christ. It would be a great blessing to help me with my health. My right leg is suffering from sciatic injuries due to herniated discs in the spine. It would help me a lot to comfort my soul. I'm already desperate. Yeah, I guess uh, it's pressing down on nerves. Well, Father God, we pray that you straighten Kennedy's spine out, that you fix these herniated discs, and that you remove any pain and weakness in his right leg and anywhere else in his body. He says he's very desperate, but he's looking for comfort for his soul. Father God, you're the ultimate comfort. But I think what he really wants is healing also. I mean, I, I'm sure he wants his soul to be comfort, comforted, but we also want his body to be uh, comforted. So Father God, your word says, by your stripes, we were healed. So, God, we pray total healing for Kennedy from this back injury and from this leg injury. And I look forward to the day we get a, pra a praise report from him saying he is totally pain-free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. These are all family-related ones here. Okay. For Celine, says, pray for my family. Mila says, pray for my family. And Murchie, pray for my family to have strong faith in God. In Jesus' name, Lord, you care about the family, Lord. You care. You are the, are the great provider. You are the great I am. You are the one who I just picture. You just, we just go under your covering, Lord. You are above everything, God. 
I pray that you would cover um, these three individuals, Salim, Mila, and Murchi, in your covering, Lord. In your, Under your wing, they will find refuge. I pray for their entire family to come to know you, Lord, in a new, fresh way. That their spirits would be uplifted, God. That they would look to the hills from where their help comes from, the maker of heaven and earth, God. That they would know you in a deep, new, fresh way. And that you would ignite their spirits for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good job. Thanks. All right, we have a, a couple of miscellaneous prayers here. Um, I'm going to pray for two of them. You want to pick, take the other? <laughs> In fact, I'll just pray for the first three. Bugama says, I'm from Uganda. Bugama from Uganda. We need prayers about to enter an election year. Tremaine says he needs a miracle. And Nuwami says, please pray for me. I have many enemies that are always against me. Well, God, we pray for an election miracle in Uganda and a revival miracle in Uganda. We pray for the same thing in the United States where we need... Uh, both an election miracle and a revival. Father God, we pray for Tremaine for whatever miracle he needs. You know what it is, God. We know that your arm is long enough to meet all of his needs. And so, God, we pray that he just feels your presence and sees the miracle working power that you have for him. And for new, new, new Ami, who says he has many enemies against me, I recommend he goes and reads Deuteronomy where it says, that if he walks right, if he's righteous, that you will cause his enemies to rise up against him in one direction, but flee from him in seven directions. Not that we'll never have enemies. In fact, you promise that if we're righteous, we will have enemies, but we're going to defeat all those enemies. So, Father God, I pray total defeat over Nuwami's enemies, and I pray that they're brought to Christ through their defeat. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And then why don't you do Christina along and Nasir? Okay, Lord. For Christina, who asked for prayer along, asked for uh, prayer as well, and Nasir as well, prayers. Lord, we know that you know what these people are going through, Lord. You know their hearts, God. I just pray you come into their situations, Lord. We intercede on behalf of them. If they feel like they've prayed and prayed and just can't pray anymore, Lord, if, give them strength. Give them your your peace, God about a situation, let them know that you are interceding. You are the great interceder, and you are interceding on their behalf, God. Come be in the midst of them and their health and their finances and their uh, relationships and emotional issues, God. Just come and show them new dreams and new purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great job. All right, uh, guys, this is the most important part of the show. This is where, if you haven't accepted Christ, this is your chance to do it right here as Kristen leads you in prayer. Just repeat after her. That's right. Dear Jesus... I admit that I have sinned. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, let us know about it. Send us a message or comment on this video. We want to know. Absolutely. All right, my love. Well, thank you for another great episode. Mm, great job, honey. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you so much. Guys, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for uh, being part of our extended family here. We love you very much. We care about you. We will see you again Wednesday night we'll, where we will probably be doing a live show, right? I think we do yeah. live shows on yep. Wednesdays. So we'll see you Wednesday night, 730 Eastern Standard Time. As always, until then, be blessed and be a blessing. He does the great, greatest sermons. Oh, thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Jordan and Kristen Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. And remember to tune in next week and every week on Tuesdays at 845 on WMCA The Mission, AM 570 and FM 102.3. Amazing grace.